Welcome to the Blood Pressure Self-Monitoring Program Nutrition Education Seminar on Heart Healthy Eating for Life. These nutrition seminars address various ways of eating that we should be mindful of to stay healthy and effectively manage blood pressure. Please be sure to write down any questions that come up during this nutrition seminar. An overview for this seminar includes nutrition and blood pressure facts, fats and oils, vitamins and minerals, healthy snacks, and dining out. Our food choices impact our blood pressure. We need to consider nutrition as a part of a healthy lifestyle that keeps our blood pressure well managed. Eating for a healthy heart is a key factor in the fight to prevent cardiovascular disease, which includes coronary heart disease, stroke, and heart failure. Eating a variety of fruits and vegetables may help manage weight, cholesterol, and blood pressure. A healthy dietary pattern emphasizes fruits and vegetables, whole grains like whole wheat, brown rice, barley, oats, low-fat dairy products, skinless poultry and fish, nuts and legumes, non-tropical vegetable oils, limiting salt or sodium, saturated fats, trans fats, and sweets in your diet can also lower your blood pressure. A healthy eating pattern can be adapted based on your cultural and food preferences and for medical condi conditions such as diabetes. Taking steps to eat a healthy diet can provide long-term benefits to your health and your heart. It's recommended that you eat a variety of foods from all of the food groups. Look for the American Heart Association heart check mark to see if the foods you are eating meet the American Heart Association criteria for saturated fat, trans fat, sodium, cholesterol, and important nutrients. We need to think about a lifestyle that promotes a healthy heart and includes a variety of foods. This slide breaks down a day into the recommended servings for the different food groups. Let's walk through this slide. There are four columns with the headings of food group, 1600 calorie diet, 2000 calorie diet, an example of one serving of the particular food group. The first food group is grains. At least half of your serving should be whole grain. On a 1600 calorie diet, aim for six servings per day. On a 2000 calorie diet, aim for six to eight servings per day. Some examples for one serving includes one slice of bread, one ounce dry cereal, check nutrition label for cup measurements of different products, half cup, cooked rice, pasta, or cereal, about the size of a baseball. The second food group is vegetables. Eat a variety of colors and types. On a 1600 calorie diet, aim for three to four servings per day. On a 2000 calorie diet, 
aim for four to five servings per day. Some examples for one serving includes one cup raw leafy vegetables about the size of a small fist, half cup cut up raw or cooked vegetables, or a half cup vegetable juice. The third food group is dairy. Fat-free or low-fat dairy products on a 1600 calorie diet aim for two to three servings per day. On a 2000 calorie diet aim for two to three servings per day. Some examples for one serving includes one cup fat-free or low-fat milk, one cup fat-free or low-fat yogurt, one and a half ounce of fat-free or low-fat cheese about the size of six stacked dice. The fourth food group is lean meats, poultry, and fish. On a 1600 calorie diet, aim for three to six ounces cooked meat products or fish per day. On a 2000 calorie diet, aim for less than six ounces per day. Some examples for one serving includes three ounces cooked meat about the size of a computer mouse, three ounces of grilled fish about the size of a checkbook. The fifth food group, fats and oils. On a 1600 calorie diet, aim for two servings per day. On a 2000 calorie diet, aim for two to three servings per day. Some examples for one serving includes one teaspoon soft margarine, one tablespoon of mayo, one teaspoon vegetable oil, one tablespoon regular or two tablespoons low fat salad dressing. The sixth food group is nuts, seeds, and legumes. On a 1600 calorie diet, aim for three to four servings per week. On a 2000 calorie diet, aim for four to five servings per week. Some examples for one serving includes one third cup or one and a half ounces of nuts, two tablespoons peanut butter, two tablespoons or half ounce seeds, half cup dry beans or peas. And the seventh food group is the sweets and added sugar. On a 1600 calorie diet, aim for zero servings per week. On a 2000 calorie diet, aim for five or fewer servings per week. Some examples for one serving includes one tablespoon sugar, one tablespoon jelly or jam, half cup sorbet and ices, and one cup of lemonade. Aim for the recommended servings to ensure your body is consuming all the minerals and vitamins it needs to be heart healthy. Now take a minute to ask yourself and to write down your thoughts. What do you notice about the categories? Does it look like a variety of foods? Think about a typical day. How are you doing meeting the recommended daily servings and eating a variety of foods? Now let's talk about sodium. It's important to remember to look for ways to reduce sodium intake for healthy heart eating. 
most Americans eat too much sodium, which increases their risk for high blood pressure, heart disease, and stroke. Most of the sodium, 75%, comes from processed and restaurant foods. You can monitor your sodium intake by doing the following. Read nutrition labels. Eat more servings of fruits and vegetables each day. A diet rich in fresh and frozen fruits and vegetables can help lower blood pressure. Eat out less, cook more at home. One restaurant meal can add up to more than one day's worth of sodium. Limit salty foods. Common foods high in sodium include breads and rolls, cured meats, pizza, poultry, soups, sandwiches, cheese, pasta dishes, and snacks. Pause to answer this question. What are some ways you are working to reduce sodium? Now let's look at fats and oils. Do we need fats and why? Dietary fats are essential. Fats give your body energy and support cell growth. Fats protect your organs and keep your body warm. Fats help your body absorb nutrients and produce important hormones. How many different fats are there? There are four major types. They are saturated fat, trans fat, monounsaturated fat, polyunsaturated fat, omega-3s. Fats have different effects on the cholesterol levels in your body. Saturated fats and trans fats raise LDL cholesterol, the lousy cholesterol. These types of fats are solid at room temperature. Monounsaturated fats and polyunsaturated fats can help lower LDL cholesterol levels, which is beneficial to the heart health. These fats are liquid at room temperature. Research has shown that omega-3 fatty acids decrease the risk of arrhythmias, abnormal heartbeats, decrease triglyceride levels, slow the growth of atherosclerotic plaque, and can slightly lower blood pressure. Fats and oils continued. Let's take a look at examples of different fats. There are many sources of fats, so your diet can include a variety of foods to meet your dietary fat needs. Try to aim for decreasing saturated and trans fat and increasing monounsaturated fat polyunsaturated fat, and omega-3s. Looking at the slide, we see the first fat, saturated fat. We want to decrease that. That comes from fatty beef, lamb, pork, poultry, with skin, beef fat or tallow, lard and cream, butter, cheese, and other dairy products made from whole or reduced fat, 2% milk, palm oil, and coconut oil. Those are all types of saturated fats that we wanna try to decrease in our diet. We also wanna try to decrease trans fat 
or partially hydrogenated oils in processed foods such as donuts, baked goods including cakes, pie crusts, biscuits, frozen pizzas, cookies, crackers, and stick margarines and other spreads. So again, try to decrease your trans fats. And the last three fats um, we wanna try to increase. So increase monounsaturated fats. These are oils like canola, peanut, safflower, and sesame oils, and avocados. Also increase polyunsaturated fat. Again, these are oils coming from soybean, corn, and sunflower oils, and fatty fish such as salmon, mackerel, herring, and trout. Also increase your omega-3 fats. These are coming from nuts, seeds, fatty fish such as salmon, mackerel, herring, lake trout, sardines, and albacore tuna. Now let's talk about vitamins and minerals. Several vitamins and minerals are critical to heart health. Studies show a diet rich in vitamin E produces a reduction of more than 40% in the risk of stroke, heart attack, and heart disease. Vitamin E is found in nuts, seeds, and cooking oils. The Cleveland Clinic reports that vitamin D helps treat diabetes and cancer, build strong bones, and prevents heart disease. You can get vitamin D from sunlight, milk, and cereal. One of the primary benefits of potassium is its ability to lower blood pressure, which can in turn help lower the risk of heart disease. One report in the March 15, 2011 issue of Current Hypertension Reports states that intakes of potassium in amounts of 4,700 milligrams per day can lower blood pressure and reduce the risk of heart attack and stroke by eight to 15%. This is also the amount of daily potassium recommended in the DASH way of eating. Sources of potassium include lean meats, fish, citrus fruits, and citrus juice, potatoes, lima beans, tomatoes, spinach, mushrooms, cantaloupe, and fat-free or low-fat dairy products. Magnesium is an essential mineral that has an effect on the heart. The National Institutes of Health reports that magnesium maintains blood pressure and pro proper heart rhythm by keeping the muscles functioning properly. Nuts, beans, spinach, peanut butter, halibut, potatoes, and avocados are sources of magnesium. Vitamins and minerals continued. Why the emphasis on potassium? Reduces the effect of sodium, relaxes blood vessel walls, which helps reduce blood pressure. Remember eating a variety of foods, including a lot of colorful fruits and vegetables help your body to consume all of its heart healthy nutrients. 4,700 milligrams of potassium is re recommended per day, but most Americans struggle to meet this goal. On average, we consume 2,640 milligrams per day. Caution, too much potassium as you get older is more difficult for kidneys to remove from our blood. 
it's important to consult with a healthcare provider if you have any kidney problems. Vitamins and minerals continued. The American Heart Association recommends the following to get key nutrients. Eat a balanced, healthy diet and include a variety from all food groups. Consume recommended amounts of omega-3s, also known as EPA and DHA. Aim for two servings of fish per week. Patients with heart disease should consume one gram per day of EPA and DHA. Patients with elevated triglycerides should aim to consume two to four grams per day of EPA and DHA. If difficult to obtain, a supplement may be needed, but always consult your healthcare provider first. It is, not it is not recommended that one take antioxidant vitamin supplements. It's always better to get vitamins and minerals by eating a balanced, varied diet. If you do not think you can reach your vitamin and mineral goals through the diet, always check with your healthcare provider before starting any supplements. Now let's talk about choosing heart healthy snacks. Here are some examples of healthy nutrient rich snacks. We have crunchy, that may include apples and breadsticks, carrots and celery sticks, green pepper sticks, zucchini circles, radishes, broccoli spears, cauliflower, and unsalted rice cakes. Going down to the lower left corner, we have our chewy category that may include unsalted sunflower seeds, whole grain breads or toast, cherry or grape tomatoes, low fat or fat-free cheese, plain low fat or fat-free yogurt, whole grain mini bagels, unsalted almonds, walnuts, and other nuts. Going back to the upper right-hand corner, we have thirst quenchers. That may include water, fat-free milk, 100% juices, so no added sugar, low sodium tomato or mixed vegetable juices. And then the bottom right hand corner, we have our sweet category, unsweetened canned fruit, thin slice of angel food cake, baked apple, raisins, dried fruit gelatin gems, frozen bananas, frozen grapes, fresh fruit, low fat or fat free unsweetened fruit yogurt. Remember to check the labels to see what the portion size is. Now take a moment to ask yourself, what does moderation look like to you? How can you have foods in moderation? Yes, that's great. You may choose to measure, weigh, or prepack snacks and foods, and you also may plan ahead. Dining out. It's important to understand what is on the menu and know what to look for. Remember that foods served fried, au gratin, crispy, scalloped, pan fried, blackened, sauteed, buttered, creamed, or stuffed are high in fat and calories. Instead, look for steamed, broiled, baked, 
grilled, poached, or roasted foods. If you're not sure based on the menu description how a meal is prepared or what ingredients it contains, ask your server. Choose entrees that feature steamed or grilled seafood, chicken or lean meat, and avoid fatty meats. If you order meat, remove all visible fat and ask the chef to remove the skin from the chicken. Check the menu for items marked healthy or ask the server what the healthiest choices on the menu are. Sometimes foods are prepared with a rub, which can be high in sodium. Ask for a lower salt option. Once you understand what's on the menu, it's important to be able to ask for more information, modifications, or substitutions. An example asking for heart healthier choice when dining out may be asking for the deep fried chicken sandwich to be made with grilled chicken instead and substituting french fries for the veggie of the day with no butter or butter on the side. Eating outside the home. Make informed choices and be selective. Avoid extras like cocktails, appetizers, bread, and butter because these are often sources of extra fat, sodium, and calories. Ask for butter, cream cheese, salad dressing, sauces, and gravies to be served on the side so you can control the quantity you consume. Be selective at salad bars. Choose fresh greens, raw vegetables, fresh fruits, garbanzo beans, and reduced fat, low fat, light, or fat-free dressings. Avoid cheeses, marinated salads, pasta salads, and fruit salads with whipped cream. Ask if the restaurant can prepare your food to order. For example, by leaving off or going very light on dressings, butter, cheese, or other high fat items. Ask if healthy substitutions or smaller portions are possible. For example, if a dish comes with french fries or onion rings, ask whether you can get a baked potato with vegetables and low fat or fat free sour cream or soft margarine on the side. Ask yourself where these tips would be helpful and how you might use them. Pause to write down your thoughts. Now we will try an activity. Here's the activity. How much sodium is in one serving for each food item? Try to guess how much sodium you think is in one serving of each of the foods on the slide. We have bread, one ounce, frozen pizza, plain cheese, four ounces, frozen vegetables at a half a cup, salad dressing, regular, two tablespoons, salsa, two tablespoons, soup, tomato, eight ounces, tomato juice, eight ounces, potato chips, one ounce, tortilla chips, one ounce, and pretzels, one ounce. Which do you think has the highest amount of sodium? Take a minute to pause to write down your answers.
All right, here's the answers to the previous slide. Let's go ahead and look at how much sodium is in each of these items. So for the bread one ounces, there can be 95 to 210 milligrams. For the frozen pizza that's plain, four ounce serving, can be anywhere from 450 to 1200 milligrams of sodium. Frozen vegetables, a half cup, can be anywhere from two to 160 milligrams. Two tablespoons of salad dressing that's regular can have 110 to 505 milligrams of sodium. Two tablespoons of salsa has a range of 150 to 240 milligrams of sodium. Tomato soup, eight ounces, 700 to 1260 milligrams of sodium. Tomato juice, eight ounces, 340 to 1040 milligrams of sodium. One ounce bag of potato chips, 120 to 180 milligrams of sodium. Your tortilla chips at one ounces can have 105 to 160 milligrams of sodium. And the pretzels, one ounce serving, 290 to 560 milligrams of sodium. What do you think when you see these answers? Yeah, it can be surprising. What surprised you? Exactly, some have quite the range in sodium. Keep in mind that when you buy prepared or packaged foods, you can read the nutrition label to learn the amount of sodium in the product per serving. You should always aim to select sodium-free, low sodium or reduced sodium foods when they are available. Final discussion and thoughts. Let's think about snacking. What are some of your favorite snacks to eat? Let's discuss a few ways to keep our snacks heart healthy. Are there whole grain versions of your favorite snack? Can we replace prepackaged fruit cups with fresh fruit? Can we replace salty chips with something else to satisfy a craving for a crunchy snack? What might you replace in your cabinets and fridge to have more heart healthy snacks and foods on hand? Pause to write your thoughts. What are some of your favorite restaurants, places to eat outside of the home? How might we prepare to dine out? Is a menu available online? How might a menu online be helpful? Pause to write down your ideas. That's right, planning ahead or figuring out what you can eat before showing up. Based on what you learned earlier, what are ways to modify a dish to be more heart healthy? Yes, prepare without added fat, Ask for sauce and dressing to be on the side. Order more fruits and veggies. And skipping the appetizer. Great job. And 
now let's talk about physical activity and high blood pressure management. Evidence has shown that regular physical activity can lead to a significant reduction in blood pressure and improve other cardiovascular risks. Moderate physical activity has also been proven to decrease blood pressure in hypertensive individuals who are less responsive to medical treatment. 30 minutes of physical activity a day, equivalent to brisk walking, six to seven days each week, or similar to 180 minutes each week, may result in better management or a reduction in one's blood pressure. Just as a reminder, a brisk walk is walking faster than a stroll. You can still talk but not sing words to a song. Now, what are some ways you can add physical activity to your day? Pause and write down your plan. These are the resources that support regular physical activity can decrease blood pressure. Please share your takeaways from this session and changes you will make to eat for a healthy heart with your Healthy Heart Ambassador at your next follow-up appointment. Please review tips for eating healthy when eating out, eat for a healthy heart, handouts. There's a total of three handouts provided via email. Don't forget to self-monitor and track your blood pressure at home. Aim for two or more blood pressure readings per month. Thank you for attending the Blood Pressure Self-Monitoring Nutrition Education Seminar on Heart Healthy Eating for Life. That concludes this Blood Pressure Self-Monitoring Nutrition Seminar. Thank you.